Singapore to modify travel restrictions on foreigners facilitate official travel. Tightened restrictions for India, loosened restrictions for Hong Kong, and borders open to the United Kingdom and South Africa. Singapore has finally decided to immediately reduce the number of travellers from India allowed entry. This does not include Singaporean citizens or permanent residents coming back from there. This comes in light of the rapidly deteriorating COVID-19 situation there, where more than 200,000 new cases emerge daily, along with many dangerous COVID-19 variants. Singapore is far from the only country to do this, with the US, UK, Hong Kong and New Zealand also restricting entry. Indian travellers coming here will have to serve an additional one-week stay-home notice at SHN at their place of residence, following the normal two-week SHN at dedicated facilities. On the other hand, Hong Kong's situation has improved sufficiently for Hong Kong travellers to be subject to a reduced SHN period at dedicated facilities from two weeks to one week only, and they can even serve the SHN at their place of residence instead if deemed suitable. Singapore will also open up its borders to travellers from the UK and South Africa with a two-week SHN at dedicated facilities followed by one-week SHN at their place of residence meaning that their SHN period is the same as India. Singapore has previously closed its borders to both countries due to the emergence of contagious variants of COVID-19 in each nation. Official travel to be facilitated in an effort to facilitate critical official travel of national importance, vaccinated officials who travel for such purposes need only be subjected to self-isolation rather than regular SHN upon return. This reduces the time taken for them to be ready for diplomatic service again, hence safeguarding our national interests. Officials who have not been vaccinated will continue to be subject to the normal SHN. Bo Ao Forum continues. Chinese President Xi Jinping speaks. At the Boao Forum yesterday, Chinese President Xi Jinping urged countries to cooperate and show mutual respect by not telling other nations what to do or to interfere in their internal affairs. He also said that he firmly opposed the unjust domination of the world by any one nation and called on all, nation, all countries to avoid adopting a Cold War mentality and engaging in ideological disputes. His comments are clearly pointed at the US, which has in recent years stepped up its criticism of China over its supposed human rights abuses in Xinjiang and curtailing of democratic freedoms in Hong Kong. Xi is additionally upset with US moves to recognize Taiwanese sovereignty and the trade war and sanctions started under the Trump administration. Moving on to less charged topics, C urged foreign leaders to do more to acknowledge climate change and to fulfill their Paris Climate Agreement pledges. This is an interesting statement as C has not announced any new ambitious goals uh, for China itself to meet under the Paris Climate Agreement, which was expected by many experts to happen at the Boao Forum. C then welcomed all interested parties to participate in the Belt and Road Initiative as he viewed it as a useful tool to alleviate poverty for nations taking part. Singapore President Halima Yaakob speaks. Singapore, uh, Singapore President Halima Yaakob said at a Boao Forum yesterday that multilateral organizations such as the World Health Organization WHO, could provide science-based frameworks to guide nations opening up to foreign travel, and that global cooperation was crucial to overcoming the COVID-19 crisis. The sentiment was echoed by Indonesian President Joko Widodo and New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinta Ardern. I mean, Adrian. Uh, President Jakob noted that while the pandemic may have hurt livelihoods, worsened social problems, and hurt global institutions, it has served as a powerful motivator to speed up the pace of digitalization, creating numerous opportunities for growth. President Jakob highlighted examples of Singapore's commitment to multilateralism, such as our cooperation with New Zealand and some countries in ASEAN and South America to keep global supply chains open during the pandemic. 
Other examples raised include our joining of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, with the rest of ASEAN, Australia, New Zealand, China, South Korea, and Japan. And Singapore's move to join the COVID-19 vaccine access, uh, global access COVAX facility to ensure equitable distribution of vaccines. Experts find delayed code of conduct worrying. Experts at the Boao Forum yesterday voiced their concerns that the delayed development of a code of conduct in the South China Sea was harmful to regional peace. China claims nearly all of the South China Sea, with their claims overlapping with nearly all ASEAN members. Many clashes and standoffs have occurred between ASEAN and Chinese vessels as a result of this. Work on the code of conduct had started earlier on precisely to avoid such incidents from escalating, and was originally expected to conclude last year. However, the pandemic stalled progress on the framework as in-person meetings became nearly impossible due to mobility restrictions. Former US and Chinese ambassadors speak. Former US ambassador to China, Max Bacos, criticized the fiery exchanges between US and Chinese officials during the meeting in America's Anchorage, Alaska. Barkas described C as being overly sensitive to China being sanctioned by the US, while also condemning the sanctions themselves as being useless and to have backfired. Barkas called on leaders on both sides to stop rallying up nationalist sentiment, as he viewed such tactics as being dangerous, for it would force both leaders to take increasingly extreme stances and leave no way to back down and de-escalate tensions, worsening the situation considerably. Former Chinese ambassador to the US, Zhou Wenzhong, repeated China's usual stance on Taiwan, describing officially recognizing the island nation as a red line that cannot be crossed. Zhou then went on to say that the US has to behave responsibly too, in response to earlier US demands that China act responsibly. Professor Kishore Mabubani speaks. Distinguished fellow at the NUS Asia Research Institute, uh, Kishore Mabubani stated that the United Nations, UN, and WHO can start being relevant by making member contributions mandatory. Professor Mabubani explained that this would restore the world order to one more reminiscent of the period immediately following the end of, the, of uh, World War II, based on UN centrality rather than great power rivalry.